Basically, the debate is across the globe that is education and health uh, a public good and it should be delivered in a manner uh, that is heavily either subsidized or actually free, uh, if not to all, the majority of the population. Uh, the examples you have quoted even there now fiscal pressures are prompting them to change that model. Uh, if you look at the tuition fees for the local students, particularly at the higher education in the UK and in Canada, so they are consistently rising and they cross subsidize because of the quality through international students. So what you need to understand is that the free education comes at a cost. And in order to provide quality education, people are struggling. Now I come to the countries like Pakistan. Uh, uh, in our priorities, in any case, human development hasn't featured on the larger political map. And since it was not, so it was never planned that how will we finance. And now, unfortunately, we are at a situation uh, and the way we have structured delivery of education and partly health is that it's heavily infrastructure and operating expenses, you know, centric. The quality hasn't gone up. So now we are short of money even to pay for it. So I have been talking to a lot of vice chancellors and, you know, school owners. Uh, we need to now come up with a model uh, which where the private sector's role has to come up. But then you need a regulatory structure to do it. To summarize what I'm saying is that first the nation has to take a decision that human development is a top policy priority. Then you bring in adequate, adequate financing behind it. Uh, at the moment, Pakistan's political priority, frankly, is not human development. So that's my take. Absolutely. I mean, the uh, way I see it, uh, the Harun Saab is saying is absolutely right. I mean, uh, one of the reasons for low productivity of the developing countries, and particularly in Pakistan, is because uh, we, we, our uh, general health and education uh, the, the conditions have deteriorated over the past few decades. And if you see the numbers uh, uh, relative to what the world is achieving, or even what, what is being achieved in India and other parts of the, of the neighborhood, uh, we feel like that. So that's that's one reason uh, which which is there uh, uh, we have left behind. Then the Harun Sab has mentioned in on this uh, that uh, in high education the the, the, the the developed world is moving towards uh, the other model and they are working on a cross subsidized model. But uh, in terms of uh, the basic education, uh, the, the, the 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 primary education, secondary education from you know uh, the, from the age of uh, six to sixteen. That somehow, whatever you call it, you know, whatever system you are into it, I think that should be free. I mean, below six, it shouldn't be free. Uh, uh, and, and in many, many Syria developed countries, the kindergarten and all that, they charge it. And then in the university, but that's something. And in Pakistan, there's a constitution provisioning of uh, uh, that providing free and compulsory education to the age of, uh, I think, five to 14 or something. So so that's, that's, that's not been implemented. And, and when we think about the Pakistan political structure, I mean, in 1990s, when when when, when Nawashid came into power, he asked a few people, okay, where should we invest in Pakistan? From, uh, I mean, how should I get the vote? How should how should I make people feel we are prosperous? So people said that, okay, invest in health and education. I said, no, it's a private sector thing. So well, let me do in some other things. So they went on about the infrastructure. And and on and on the glory of infrastructure, what Harun has been saying is like you know we've been spending on infrastructure and health and um, uh, education as long as as the government is spending its concern. Now, what was done being done, what's gone is gone. Now, um, I mean that there, there's there, there's an opportunity to leap forward. You know, the the technology is there. I mean we we've been recording this show while I'm sitting at my home. Harun's up sitting at your office. And you're sitting at your office and 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 and, and i've been seeing that in the COVID, the education is moving that way as well so so there is a lesser need of the physical infrastructure there's a more need of the virtual infrastructure the, the systems to in place and and again this it's kind of a public private partnership to come in and play a role 
as as about 25 percent of the kids of Pakistan are not going to school or something, and uh, that's a big number. And then in you know, the health, the the 40 percent of the kids are malnutrition or or stunted. So those are the big numbers. And going forward with 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 the 65 percent of the population below the age of 35. But with these numbers, uh, these uh, handicap numbers, uh, this is not a bright future. We need to change all that. And for that, we need to invest in health and education from the public and the private sector. And we need to be innovative about to move beyond the infrastructure and, and imparting some kind of a skill set, some kind of education that helps the country. Uh, we need to very carefully look at the governance structure of these sectors. You know, what happens is that in a public uh, school or a college, uh, they own huge amount of land, if you see, you know, normally. And then what they do is from uh, housing to teachers to transport, even cafeterias, everything is run by uh, the academics. So their incentives actually go. Uh, I checked, you know, my friend uh, Nadimul Haq and I were walking, you know, in uh, Lahore, uh, this uh, uh, Lawrence Gordon or the Kadiyazam Muhammad Vijana Park, and there's a library there. They have not purchased a single book in past 15 years. All the money they get is actually spent on paying the librarian's house and the car and the salaries. So we need to be very clear that how we change the governance structure, learn to outsource services which are not academ academia's domain, under the law, no bank will even give loan to academia because they cannot pledge their land. Uh, I started an initiative that how we can cut down the expenditure of education institutions. And I told uh, the former chairman HEC that why don't we put solar panels on all universities so that at least the electrical electricity bill goes down and you can cross subsidize it to other things. Now, the tuition remains still low in Pakistan as compared to South Asia. And it's a political question. Nobody will dare raise it. Uh, so we need to have larger uh, private sector, uh, general public and academia uh, uh, connectivity or engagement. At the moment, they just look at our budgetary resources and live in their own you know, structures where they sit on number of assets and often on prime land. So all I'm trying to say is that one needs to look at the sector that how it can be make, made more effective. Uh, I quote an example which Singapore is a small country, but in 1978, they took a public policy decision that we are going to shift our education system from producing uh, graduates who improve efficiency to producing graduates who have knowledge background. So they have entered into knowledge economy and started changing the structure of very basic education. You know, it starts at the primary and secondary level so that the foundation is set. And now look at it that in terms of knowledge products, where Singapore is standing. I mean, you need to think on those lines. You need to think on those lines. Okay, you have like schools and all those presents over there. Now, what you need to do is like, you need, you need, you need, you need, to, you, need, you, need you can do those in mosques. A mosque is in every area, so you can you can allocate some area in the mosque between the you know the, there's a budget prayer, then the reserve prayer, there's in between a few hours gap. So you can have the kids over there, then you can install some some stock of the, the, the internet and everything. So you need to have the provision of the internet. You need to have provision of some kind of a supervisor over there as a teacher or something who can who can help the kids to do what they do. Then you need to have those uh, the tablets and the machines and maybe a big screen and, uh, which is connected and, and then the supervisor is handling that screen and then, then 20, 30, 40 kids are sitting on that and then they're having that lecture and all that or maybe they do have five, seven machines which they, these kids share in between them and, and do their lessons and all that. So there are ways to do move around it. There are ways to do it that, that, that you involve the private sector into that, that you involve the government into that and work on that. My point is this, that the kind of spending we are doing on the infrastructure, the kind of spending we are doing on the paying the, um, the, uh, the salaries and the kind of infrastructure we are paying on the other 
auxiliary services which are not there or which are not there. like what the uh, what Harun said is like a, it's a classic example of Kaidya as a library. I mean, um, once you write on it, that, 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 that for the past 15 years, no new book has been bought, all the expenditure is spent on, uh, you know, XYZ things and all that. So why not to have to get get those libraries virtual? We don't need that kind of a library. We need staff. We don't you need uh, those kind of well, electricity bills and everything and all that? So so you can work on it. You can you can increase uh, the uh, uh, input over there. So, so so and 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 that's that's how you 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 have to divert it from the human resource and the capital and uh, 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 infrastructure allocation for. On capital, so that's that's very important. It's it's gonna be some kind of experiment, some kind of a, uh, methodologies to be used, and something will fit in, and then can go up and scale up, and the private sector can see the value in it and get it. Now, and now the private sector is providing majority of the education in schools as well. I mean, you know, you know, schools who are charging like 500 rupees fee to uh, maybe yeah, 50,000 rupees fee, and then you have the so the latest schools are charging in dollars. So, but those, those there, there are there are every kind of a people in that. So those who, those people are paying already. I really don't think that we should just focus on the resource envelope here. Uh, I would raise a question to ourselves. Uh, the first question is, who will do it? Uh, I'm actually debating, you know, on lots of macro reforms that they don't happen. But who will do it and why? Politicians, you know, their incentive lies in constituency politics. And the voter does not demand health and education to give them vote, you know. Uh, so when I ask the elected members of the parliament that particularly in the rural constituencies, that what do your electorate, they, what are they asking for? They said they're asking for two, three things and it's very interesting and how priorities of an electoral politics work. Majority of them is asking for jobs. Uh, they're asking for provision of utilities. They're asking for protection against the harassment of state institutions like police and, you know, the revenue record people and others. If they get their things done uh, in return, they are voted to be in power, you know? So we got to understand that how kind of, you know, a patronage structure we are living in. It's a bigger question that who will do it. Now let's assume for a while that we, uh, there is a demand obviously, and the government wants to prioritize this. Then the steps I would suggest in our very tight fiscal space, that first of all, I will put a ban on construction of new education institutions. Because when you cannot run what you have effectively, there is no point continuously building those. So the budgets allocated for that should actually go on the provision and expansion of existing structure. First, go and interact with people so that, you know, rather than just doing, you know, in their own uh, uh, island of excellence or whatever. Third is that use, you know, mosque has been mentioned, but mosque is a cultural place. I, I agree with that. But government is sitting on massive properties honestly speaking and they keep on adding it you know bureaucracy has this brilliant tendency of continuously expanding perks and privileges so our taxpayer is paying for it i think use the existing assets convert it into education and health then bring in partners and you know start investing in it where you can sustain the return, make it commercial. When you cannot sustain the return, make it subsidized. Pakistan is no way uh, in the mode of social protection or provision of free goods and services. But people also need to, our students are an asset. And, but look at their productivity to the economy. Uh, you know, there is a five hours of school, they do nothing else. We need to create an incentive structure where students can be part of the labor force. You know, they should learn how to earn and that is where they will start demanding skills that, by the way, this is a skill which sells. So this is a change of mindset and model and we need some champions for it. But first, the top leadership and the power brokers in Pakistan, we have a fragmented structure, need to make it a priority that in the next 20 years, 
we want to go from this baseline to there and then you work backwards that is how things have worked in other countries uh, uh, in the current structure of just passing on budgets to government you know departments the wastage is huge and there is absolutely no incentive to take this you know agenda forward unfortunately government is announcing this you know ki education free for this and that that's 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 little that's all fluff we need to get over with it harun is saying we need to get over with this fluff i mean you have a constitution requirement of providing free education to the kids of 5 to 14 and there is about 25% of the kids in the country and i know maybe how much of the punjab are not getting this and the kind of education those who are getting is 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 getting bad and bad and 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 when 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 people have done the research and when they do when they they, they see what kind of education level those teachers have uh, who that i mean a like, uh, teacher can't solve a class five uh, math uh, sum or can't can't uh, write a simple essay or uh, by an english teacher so when when those things are happening i mean and you're saying that we do will do will do this that you are not serious when you make such statement at a government level which is like you know i want to play the international cricket in 6 month at the age of 40 odd so that kind of a statement is this so, so they are not serious about the things when you announce this if they are serious about things they announce what is doable what is doable like what um, uh, harun said that okay when the pm um, ik came at the start he said that okay i'll convert the governor out to an education institution that was something we could be had and hope that can happen but that never happened but nonetheless you work on those you change to 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 those government buildings into the education and centers and all those and you provide them the skill set what is required let the private sector come and let the private equity ventures come in the technology provide them that's that's very important that's very important you need to work what is doable i would not comment on some some kind of a government um, uh, 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 claim which is like nothing just a statement um and just a statement out of nothing and two months down the road there would be entirely a different statement and it and, is and just the, like sorry to interrupt it is just like whenever a head of state goes to another country i if i take past 20 minute uh, years announcements they say we will increase bilateral trade to 5 billion dollars <laughs> now for god's sake where on earth that will happen so we need to actually work out a substance yeah. not a populist standard copy paste statement sorry exactly. i could but that's yes, how yes, so, 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 that's how so you have to you have to you have to work on something which you can do and i think what they can do is is to impart the skill set to the kids uh, of between the age of 12 and 30 and and, and as arun said even those in medical college engineering universities and all that where the kids they they they, they, they have a five hour study they have a four hour or something in a day or maybe be 20 hours a week which they can work on they can work on mcdonalds they can work in a mall they can work as an electrician they can work as a carpenter they can work as a computer technician they can do a number of things and they can work as a clerk they can do it something to start a bring them discipline b impart them some skill set c learn them how things happen in the world to stand on their feet Absolutely. to have their self respect and now the kid of 30 years 25 years still living with the parents and parents are responsibility taking so that's we need to get through out of that and and of course we need to include our women in the labor force and i think that we need to improve the education of the women at every level even in the rural backward areas technology where girls schools are not there or other parents are not comfortable of care sending kids girls to the school here those things can do some simple wonders and then here in the education at the even when in the college the girls are there in the college they 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 should they should be working somewhere so they they should have the confidence and start working with the confidence and that would boost the the overall productivity and all that so i think that, that we do things small targets have small targets and achieve them don't go for this long short statement which have no meaning it's really unfortunate that people you know somehow all is geared towards populism 
all is geared towards politics. So this is a very serious thing that our competitors have really started investing in a big way. And uh, we need to create demand uh, because at this point in time, unfortunately, even among educated classes and elite, there's very little demand to change that narrative, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so the yes, the, the, the people actually don't demand a narrative which is the requirement. They, they want just comforting statements and then the, the problem is polarity between the people and between their political leaning. So yes, you have to have a targeted statements, targeted narratives and, and people should help government officials and uh, other stakeholders accountable.